City council members have announced their plan to disband the Minneapolis Police Department. We're calling for defunding the police. Shootings in New York City have more than doubled this year. All right, look, I can't tell if we're live or not. So uh, I'm, I'm. I think we are. I think so too. I don't think there was any countdown whatsoever. I think that. Um, I think that that is probably the the scariest intro uh, we've ever done. And Hydra Man Blue says we're live, so that confirms the whole thing. We got uh, a great show for you tonight. I'm going to adjust my camera slightly. Uh, Dispatcher John is sitting waiting in the lobby we don't want to keep him waiting too long how about our in the shadows john our own jb john take it away with your intro here we're going to take calls from you and we're going to discuss some dispatching stuff sometimes depressing but we're going to do it in a suspiciously carefree manner we're on our first episode today please forgive us our uh, bumps as we go along here's your host drew breezy Hey, as John just mentioned, my name is Drew Breezy. Uh, please forgive the sins, but don't hate the sinners, because we are running into some bumps and bruises along the way here. Uh, we had a little audio issue with Dispatcher John just a second ago, and uh, I don't know if we're going to recover from him or not. And understand, this is uh, our first go-round with a live call-in show. Here's, here's what I'm looking for. Here's what I'm, I'm looking to do. I'm Drew Breezy. My real name is Andrew Baxter. That's that's not something that I'm confessing for the first time to the public. A lot of people know that. But I'm Drew Breezy. I started out in the world of criminal justice in a communication center as a dispatcher. I was a 911 operator. I was a radio dispatcher. I did the whole gamut. I know 10 codes. I know nature codes. Uh, I know CAD. Uh, CAD was a, a, a fellow I went to uh, high school with. And what uh, eventually happened is I went out to the street as a, as a police officer. I was a, a sheriff's deputy for quite a long time. And um, <clears throat> there I stayed. And um, I, uh, you fast forward like 25 years later, and stop me if you've heard this, 25 years later, I came back as a lieutenant to run the exact same comm center that I had started in. It wasn't the exact same. They had moved locations. They had expanded a little bit. But essentially, I uh, came back to run the exact same comm center that I had started in, and um, I noticed a few things. One of them being not much had changed other than maybe some paint and some of the technology. In other words, I always kind of felt for the dispatchers because the citizens are quite rude. And the cops can be downright rude to them at times, myself included. And um, they kind of turn on each other at times. And there's a reason for that. So I dug pretty deep when I was working up there. I just wanted to get to the bottom of why. I wanted to get to the heart of the matter. And I found out uh, a lot of stuff about trauma. Uh, so I want to share that with you. But the main goal of this, uh, of this funky journey that we're all embarking on on, on uh, planet JB is that <clears throat> he started as an officer and transitioned into being a dispatcher. I did I, get wise hand, eventually. Yes. I I'm sorry. What'd you say? I said, I got wise eventually. I, uh, I, I do see dispatcher John in the lobby. So we're good there. I, on the other hand, um, started off as a dispatcher, as I just told you in case you weren't listening. And I ended up as a cop. So in the style of a 70s sitcom, number one, we're the odd couple in the sense that he is a officer turned dispatcher. I'm a dispatcher turned officer. We both speak both languages, although I probably have a more in-depth uh, knowledge of the officer language. Uh, I want to get first responders and dispatchers together on the same page, sometimes on the same phone call. 
because I know your complaints, dispatchers, about the cops. And I know your complaints, cops, about the dispatchers. And I'm not going to exclude firefighter paramedics. That would be foolish. There's one or two of them here. I am sure that they're staged a block away from their computer watching. And I will I'm let them know. Safe. John, please let them know that it, it is safe for them to come in. You guys are cleared to approach. Uh, where are we going? Uh, so, <clears throat> and we also uh, will, um, we will not exclude troopers as those in the chat have asked us. But what I'm saying is don't sleep on these chats. Get into these chats. It is probably some of the most engaging shit you will um, endure. And it's uh, fun, funny. We take care of each other. We, uh, we band together when trolls show up. Although everybody gets a voice here, please. Uh, this is about uh, discourse, not discord. Uh, although discord is the name of the server that we happen to be on. Uh, that's another story. So <clears throat> I've kind of told you about me. John's told you about him. So uh, Dispatcher John, I'm going to bring you in. I hope that our audio uh, issues have been resolved. Perhaps they haven't. If not, the other John will be able to talk to you. We're going to go through some voicemails. But listen, America, if you don't know and love Dispatcher John, you need to get to know and love Dispatcher John. He is on, uh, he is a social media maven. He is sometimes referred to as a meme comic. He is also, um, he is also the author, founder, and uh, he runs administrator for a, a page, a Facebook page, a Facebook group called Dispatcher John. And uh, he is kind of like the Pied Piper for dispatchers. We all look up to John. He, he has quite a few followers on Instagram too. It's at dispatcher John, one word. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Just give me a tip of the cap if you can. And he can I'm hearing some come through. <laughs> so, some, we're, we're doing something. <laughs> so every once in a while, John's going to give us, uh, or every once in a while, John's going to give us. If I look like I'm saying. concentrating, I'm. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> This is exactly what I envision this to be because what I want this show to be is a communication center. It's just a typical comm center. The radio works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your speaker goes out. You got the other John in the upper right-hand corner of your screen working busy, screening calls because I'm about to release the new phone number for our show and uh that i got a big weight on that one so i will no we uh we could we could go ahead and release the new number uh I, i've already been taking calls to my personal voicemail and uh, it caused a huge problem for me here in the comm center which is just utterly typical i'm trying to be on the radio and uh the phone's ringing so that was the situation there a little bit earlier and now dispatch john has disappeared and he's back he's coming back all right is he on uh, uh, is he on wilmington uh internet there or what's going on he you're, you're not in the, you're not in the north carolina area are you i'm gonna go with a no uh well actually that might be a yes so uh, a listen yes. <laughs> john i'm just gonna give you the floor for a minute why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your page we're good uh, are you there Yes, I am. Can you hear me at all? It's still sounding like two robots having sex while they're playing Pong in the 80s on my side. If well, that's exactly me. what we are. I, I'm going to... Um, <laughs> hey, go ahead and give us your bio. Give us uh, your... Oh, he's gone. The uh, perhaps It's so the hard to know. If the problem is our problem or if it's his problem, because we know by doing that. Okay. So we've got, we're doing our own for our podcast for the first time ever. Okay. But we've also got the most technologically complicated podcast. I wish I could. All I could tell you is before the show, Drew and I were talking about what it's like for me to be in this role. And yeah, it's kind of easy to be a lackey or a sidekick or whatever, but I'm also having to run all of this call screening software and it's every bit as complicated as being a dispatcher on your first day. So uh, every time we hit a snag, we can't tell if it's on our end or their end. 
we're doing the best we can. So we're all about multitasking and we're all about bad equipment. So John, why don't you relate to the other John that I just have opened the floor to him? He, he, he can give us the wherewithal, who is he, what's, he, what's, what's his message? Okay, now I'm hearing I'm hearing Drew there. I can hear okay, you there. Ben, can you uh, just uh, the floor is yours? Just uh, just give us a, a bio and a background, and and let's let's get into it. Um, I'm a dispatcher. I've been a dispatcher for twenty, starting my twenty third year. I've uh, I got into. Uh, started out as volunteer fire and then i worked into emd i got out of emd and transferred to the police department in my town i've worked there ever since and it's with uh, uh, social media i had a video go viral and uh i started the video was the uh, shotgun or gunshots and fireworks after that i uh, started writing jokes for pages and um i started doing snapchat with other departments and the reason was to lighten it up and to break up the stress a little bit and um my department has in my city has a very uh, strict social media policies and they didn't want anything inside the department being posted so i got into writing memes for some pages and then went out on my own and uh it kind of just took off from there uh, there was other pages that helped me and uh was helping me get my name out there and they kind of took me under their wing and some of them I, I didn't even have probably 100 followers and they they would uh i would i could ask them anything at any time and uh, groundwork what should i do what shouldn't i do what would you suggest and uh you know there was it's a pretty overall i mean i mean there's probably a few but i mean everybody that i i work with or i share or uh, stand up pages that have worked together they've uh you know kristen over at uh, uh diary of a mad dispatcher she she took me under her wing and I, I would ask, you know, should I hit this? Should I go here? Should um, always just you know, was helpful. And then other pages of, uh, and once I got to a certain point, I always wanted to do that for others, you know, and if someone was new coming out and um, I've always thought of, you know, I'm going to push whoever wants me to push them and help them because they may go farther than me and then bring me along or and, and, and gone so like that but um there's uh honestly there's uh, if I've, I've been watching now for a couple of years and dispatchers are starting they're bringing the heat with the memes and the pages and they're <laughs> it's turned out really good i mean uh, yeah I, certainly I, I, 10 8 memes comes to mind huh <laughs> 10 8 memes comes to mind. Oh, yeah, they're good. Uh, they're, I mean, there's a lot of good meme pages out there. And, uh, you know, you, I think, you know, if it's done right, it's there's a lot of positivity that can come from it. And um, I'd like to think I'm responsible for cutting down calls on 4th of July for fireworks and gunshots. <laughs> yeah, you just hope they're a little bit educational, don't you? You hope that maybe somebody <laughs> learns that, uh, yeah, they're not gunshots, you know, and that I, everyone calls in on that. I, I think there's as, always uh, a little bit of education. Yeah, I, I think part of it, too, is uh, <laughs> it gives the dispatchers, like, we all look up to you, so it gives the dispatchers kind of permission to to be shitty to the, the people that call in and that know what gunfire sounds like that's these aren't oh, fireworks my dad was yeah. in the army i know what gunfire sounds like. spent yeah. my whole life around guns and i still don't know that they fizzle at the end apparently so. <laughs> right they make a <laughs> squealing sound at the end uh john i'm going to throw up a few of your memes uh that i just selected at random oh you know what i want to i want to talk about this this is important i i think it's 
hugely important that you're uh, advancing in the profession. I know that you're heavily involved in canine with your department or in the area that you work in, uh, but I was very impressed by this. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, I recently just joined the uh, crisis negotiation team. Um, they had a spot open up. I thought it would be cool to represent the dispatch on it just in case. Yes. I'm a, so, I'm a hostage negotiator too. Yeah. I, I love it. I mean, I've just, I'm just getting started. I've had uh, just initiated some training and it's kind of, I got it. I got it dealt to me. I mean, the guys didn't take it easy on me. They put me in there. Um, no, we could have a whole show about that, about uh, people who are undergoing that training for the first time, and they'll they'll take a break and they'll barricade themselves in the bathroom, and they have to actually be <laughs> talked out of there like they actually are in crisis. That's how stressful. I was that sweating. Me. Hey, they were just they were two doors down. They were just in the next room, and we had a drop camera in there and a mic, and they were we threw a phone in, and it, I mean we went through it, and it. Uh, Dude, they had me sweating. I mean, I was sitting there. That picture they took right then was when I first got going. And uh, I'm not kidding you. I was uh, I was sweating through my shirt. I mean, he was, I mean, he was very, he's experienced. He's been uh, on it for a while. And he's yeah, been, so he's what you're talking about is you had someone else there who's an experienced negotiator being a role player as a bad guy, right? Yes, I'm sorry. Right. I kind of talked over that. Yeah. Um, no, that's okay. It's just you've you've he's basically when he's in hostage negotiations training, he'll be on the phone for what? How long do scenarios go? Four hours or until you switch negotiators? And this whole time, much like being a dispatcher, you've got to take all this verbal abuse and you have to <laughs> listen to this person say and do all these really morally unconscionable things. And you still have to try to build a rapport oh, with yeah. them so but, that but, you can influence their thinking. And I, even I gotta, the training itself is incredibly stressful. I, I know I'm probably pre preaching to the choir here. I got to ask the question. I mean, um, and this is maybe for the podcast listeners, the, the, the first responder or the cops in the, in the group, doesn't it stand a reason that the people who talk on the phone for a living and have to get uh, crucial and vital information out of people in a very small amount of time, um, you know, like that really hones your communication skills. It's called the communication center. That's what comm center is short for. Um, and so it doesn't kind of stand a reason that you would train even in the interest of time. Like if you want to, if you want to uh, call out negotiators just because they have a badge, they're not doing criminal. When you're doing a negotiation, both of you correct me if I'm wrong. You're, you're not doing a criminal investigation. You're, you're, t you're talking to a human being and trying to get them to remember that they're a human being. And I, I don't think that there's, there's any more qualified position than somebody who knows how to handle emergency crisis situations. Is that what you've run into? Yeah. I mean, it was uh, like on the team, you know, everyone has a different role and there is actually another dispatcher on there and they, they've went, I mean, they pulled me aside and they said, look, he's going to be the intelligence officer and the, he's amazing. I mean, he can track down any form of, I and mean, that's just dispatchers. That's what you're known for. That's what we do every day. Yeah. 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 Intel and dude, he was every day. information. They said, if he's your intelligence, you will get every bit of intelligence that you need. And uh, he did. I mean. Uh, and when then, like when we would rotate our roles, he was he gave me pointers of, hey, pull their Facebook, pull this, pull that, go here, and uh, he goes find out anything and everything about them. And I mean, really, the I mean that was my first first time training. It was uh, really got into it, and um, I mean, he showed me a lot. And you know, everybody knows dispatchers can find out anything at any time <laughs> about anything. <laughs> anything personal or professional so uh, yeah. have you, have you uh, had to employ your skills in the real uh, real world environment yet or is this uh, you're just certified and waiting waiting for the first call to come in um i've had a couple calls that i handled in the past that i brought i guess that was was going to be classified as my application for the team and um, i said here this is a call that i handled this is uh, we had a standoff one time and i was on the phone with them 
and then I was on the phone with the people that were in, uh, I guess they were the victims. They were, well, no, they were downstairs in a downstairs apartment and they had me stay on the phone with them and tell them when to run from the residence. And, um, so I used all that to just kind of solidify that I could achieve or handle what I was doing and, and get on the team. And, uh, I, I Thus far, I like it. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been called out yet, but um, then just the training alone is. The training's fun and you get to meet so many great people. Um, I've met people all over who dispatchers, police officers, and it seems like uh, police officers a lot of times will get, uh, they're the ones who kind of get intensive training because they're the ones who are going to be out there on the bridge talking to somebody or whatever. But uh yeah, dispatchers just have a natural talent for it because we talk to people all the time and we gather that intelligence and we're a huge part of it. And uh, one of my trainers told me, and this is no disrespect to anyone, but he said dispatchers are so valuable for hostage negotiations that were crisis negotiations. He said he'd, he'd trade one cop for three dispatchers with as, as much stuff as we could do for those efforts. That's yeah. So true. And I, I, I liked it as real as it was because they, they didn't hold back. I mean, and I, I'm glad they, I'm, I hope they wouldn't because they always, you know, you train like you fight. And right. I just, he, he hit me with things that were hitting close to home with things I was going on in my life that he knew about. And he did, he's, I'm like, Hey man. And, uh, so <laughs> Chill I said, out. Hey, pull his Facebook. And uh, the, I the good role he, players will know you and they don't pull your punches. I, I can remember having the rug absolutely pulled out from underneath me on a very serious and personal issue right away. And uh, one of the things you have to learn when you're a hostage negotiator is that the, the role player or the person who's actually in crisis will try to make it personal. And you have to find a way to, to deflect and kind of get back to what's yeah. going on with them. You know, uh, one I, of the things... I, one of the things that we've talked about before, John, when you had me on your, your live was, um, uh, I, I, I don't think that cops or firefighters for that matter, understand the number of times that dispatchers have been on the 911 emergency dispatchers have been on the phone with somebody doing exactly what you're, you know, you're trained to do now. Uh, but trying to talk them out of killing themselves or being the last voice or being the last set of ears that a human hears because they kill themselves uh -huh. on the phone. So who like from a resiliency standpoint, who is more, who is better equipped to handle stuff like this? Like a dispatcher who unfortunately has probably endured this once or twice. It never gets easier or the cop that's going to invest six or seven hours in a negotiation and it still ends the exact same way. Yeah. And I've kind of took a look at it as I, I believe what I, the way that I like to talk to people is confident. I like to present myself either if it's real or if it's bullshit confidence, I hope they're going to feed off that and make them confident in that they're going to trust me. And I don't like all the, and it's not that I don't like it. It's, I just like it being more direct because they would ask me questions of if someone said this to you and there were, you know, you hear others saying, well, it's, I can relate to you. It sounds like you're having, and I would just know. And they'd be like, this is it. I can't do anything else. This is not it. You have another day. You wake up tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. And I was just taking the whole direct um, approach of, no, it, this is not all you have. This is not your only option. And uh, that's what I liked about it. Um, I wouldn't, I wasn't being milly mouth with them at all. Um, the, when I was, I was going to get to earlier, he said that when he was hitting me with the personal stuff, I said, Hey, I went to my intelligence. I said, pull his Facebook. Well, his dog had ran away. So I threw that in and I said, hey, man, I know you got a lot going on right now and I've got animal control out there chasing your dog. We're trying to help you and get your dog captured and, and, and secured. So, you know, we ain't got to worry about that anymore. And after the training, he came out, he's like, damn, man, you, you brought my dog into this. Said, you started it. You know what you were doing. <laughs> that is a that is hitting love. Um, 
we uh here let me throw up another meme uh this is what i like about john i mean it's just uh if i can find it, it it's just you're a hundred percent right in the sense that we're too damn serious i mean listen uh Law enforcement agencies in particular are just now kind of discovering within the last couple of years are just now discovering social media. So they think it's all about the stupid TikTok dances and, and whatever COVID brought us. Um, th- there's utility in, in social media and law enforcement. You can get just, uh-huh. the Idaho murder is a, a, a murder is a, is a classic example. But if you're going to be funny, just be funny. I mean, like, there has to be a whole separate side to this and you have to understand, or the world has to understand that cops and dispatchers and firefighters, uh, first responders, uh, nurses, it it is a warped and twisted sense of humor, but it's probably, it's all born out of tragedy. I mean, like if you don't laugh at what you're seeing, you're seeing things that the human brain isn't, uh, meant to process. Now, some of the internal things that we have to endure in a comm center is, uh, the title of this candle is reheated, uh, reheated tilapia in the break room microwave. Is that not a violation of your department's SOPs? I've been that guy. That's why I shared that. I've cooked tilapia in dispatch. And, um, what, one of our main SOPs is that uh, the comm center bathroom is not for dropping a deuce. It's only for crying. So if you're going to go in there, <laughs> make sure you're not. Right. So, I mean, that's another form of resiliency. You can, you have to hold things for 12 hours at a time. Uh, we have somebody on the line that I want to get to in a second, but this is uh, one of my favorite memes from recent uh, that you, you put together. Uh, this is the uh, POV when you stop by the fire department after dinner and they're in their kind of onesies. I think that's a, t- I think that one uh, we'll call the one on the far left, the, the where's Waldo. Uh, the one on the right is wearing just sheets. It looks like um, that's a Terry cloth number second to the right. He looks like Mike Brady. And then uh, speaking of Mike Brady, Tom Brady is uh, in the dark blue there. Uh, what, what do you suspect he is wearing underneath that? And if you know, and you don't want to say that's fine too. <laughs> it's probably just saving it for a meme on a different kind of website. Yeah, that could be that, uh, that could definitely be, we're going to take a call for one second here. Again, if you, if you haven't called us yet, I'm going to put the number up again. It's uh, 848-COM-911, 848-COMM-911. That's 848-266-6911. I know that you've been uh, worried about this uh, 757 number that Jonathan has invented. Um, That that has kind of gone by the wayside. We secured a, uh, a, a number calm nine one one. So, um, it kind of just runs in line with the show, but, um, I want to talk to somebody in Cincinnati for a few reasons. One, he's one of my favorite guys. His name is Jason Two, He is probably staging right now because he himself is a firefighter. Jason, are you in your Terry cloth, uh, onesie? <laughs> Are you there? Caller, or are you there? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. That's hot. Where, where are the tube socks? And by fire extinguisher, we we mean a, a firefighter. So, Jason, what's the weather like in Cincinnati today? Jason has a podcast called one more and I'm out of here with, uh, Rob and Dan, uh, his two partners. Uh, it's a brilliant podcast. I want you to check it out when you get a chance. It's on just about every podcast platform, but Jason and I have uh, grown together. However, what he 
fails to realize is that I grew up in Western New York. I think he knows that. So I do have an affinity for the Buffalo Bills. And I know that um, perhaps it wasn't intentional that the the Bengals player um, knocked the Bills player to the ground and nearly killed him. Uh, Jason, do you have any insight on what happened there? Jason, before you answer, Drew, uh, could we make sure that the co- the audience could hear him? I can't hear him. So Jason's talking about the impact of the Devin Hamlin player. Uh, Jason, we can't actually hear you right now. Uh, The audience can't. Drew and I did work all this out before the show, and somehow it's all going wrong. This is what happens, though, when uh, you launch a a brand new podcast. Because Jason's just going on and on and on about this incredible injury. He's actually doing a great job of breaking it down and and how he's turning the wrong way and getting injured. Uh, The best part about this is about how uh, when we come back and we listen to this episode, none of us will probably remember this football play. Jason, can you hear me? No, I see. I don't think he can hear you. So, Jason, we're we're running into some technical difficulties, uh, and I don't know why, but you just gave a very eloquent explanation. I'm hoping it makes it into the uh into the podcast because it was a a great explanation but i'm i'm gonna have to let you go here so we can get back into what we're doing and maybe resolve some of these other issues but man uh thank you for calling thank you're always a huge supporter of ours you're you're a and what i would term a huge athletic supporter and uh i admire and respect you and, and and even with that little firefighter goatee thing you got, he took me to Skyline Chili. He tried to kill me. Uh, and we had a blast when we were in Cincinnati, and we are certain to go back up. And we uh, definitely uh, invite you to come down here. We're hoping to do a meetup pretty soon here in South Florida. Drew, we just uh, massively uh, shortchanged everybody on the whole call-in aspect of this show. Even now, Jason's still talking because he thinks he's a part of the show. All right, Why don't we play a voicemail? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. See you. Try one uh, of them voicemails. I think we have a <laughs> voicemail ready to go. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, apparently, I did not go to church because I... Uh, I'm an abject <laughs> failure at this point. Hold on a second. Uh, we're going to play some voicemails for you. Now, someone give me a thumbs up the minute we can hear these. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can. Oh, man. That would put the show in the realm of uh, basically a resounding failure if we can't get the voicemails or the callers to work. <laughs> you know, we, we worked on this. We've been working on this for months, and we worked on it for hours today, and it uh, and it all worked. But that's one hundred percent live podcast. Do you know who? Do you know who's doing this? I've got to believe it's Andrea or one of her people who are sabotaging us, who are trying to make us look like bigger jabronis than she is on night shift with her delay. It could possibly be Satan. Let me uh, let me take a look at my settings here and make sure that everything that I have is where it's supposed to be. Test one two three. Yes. Well, there was there was a ang- there was a post today that shared your uh, announcement of the show from Dispatcher Shenanigans, yes. saying that even though she wasn't, even though that that wasn't the first guest, so you know we could look at the look at that page too. I do know that she's. Uh, only kind of offended but she said that because she likes you so much that she was going to let it slide this time or Uh, mess up anything yeah that could be i mean this could all be sabotage but i would think that she would sabotage you first but you know what she did kind of you know what i'm saying yeah because at first we were having that issue so um 
I am going to try one more thing, and then uh, if not, I am probably just going to, as John and I discussed, I have a large samurai sword to the left of me, and I am just going to commit Harry. Cole. I don't want to jinx it, but right now it's sounding really good. <laughs> Great. All right, hold on. Let's see what we got here. And I need some... Uh, Nothing. Do you, can you hear anything? Because you can hear? Dog. Yeah. Oh. The dog's not supposed to... Okay. Yeah, hi. This isn't an emergency, but um, my neighbor's dog just took a shit on my patio and Typical I need some uh, police assistance because, you see, the dog, the dog's not supposed to be here because I might identify as not person that enjoys dog shit on their patio so if you could bring the police over here and write that dog a ticket i really appreciate it and while you're at it my other neighbor has had his music on from like two o'clock in the afternoon to 5 30 and it's really disturbing to me as an individual because it's really loud and he shouldn't be allowed to have his music on that loud and i haven't like gone over to talk to him yet or anything because well that's not my job to talk to somebody that i have a problem with that's your job so yeah i'm not gonna give you my address you should just already know because of, i call so yes if you can just send somebody that'd be great it's and a, no i don't want contact it's a, <laughs> okay it's anonymous, and you pay my. I really feel like this show is going to end up being a bigger hit than last year's NYPD Christmas party with the rookie and her lieutenant. <laughs> that was uh, that was a correctional officer in California who called me in the middle of the awesome. night while I was driving home during a blizzard, and I answered the phone call because I needed to connect with some humanity in that dark moment. <laughs> and then I actually had to hang up on her and tell her to call me back and leave me a voicemail. <laughs> and... All right, Bosco. Here's our boy Bosco. Y'all know that I'm excited. For the new direction y'all are heading and uh got my full support ready to rock and roll much love brothers and uh merry christmas a little late bosco but uh prismatic just like your vehicle i appreciate your accent there it's always fun to hear and it's undoubtedly blaring the allman brothers band and or tedeschi trucks here's another uh, my name is alabama trans you know call him because John, uh, you might hopefully speak I got language. the right number, but it's an all-out blizzard out here in Alabama. I'm talking full on wide out, doom and gloom at 51 degrees, and I mean it's really coming down out there. And my hemorrhoids are uh, eating so bad, and I need a steroid. But damn it, this whole town done shut down, and I can't get a ride to the hospital. And, and dispatch keeps hanging up on me, and I got a real flare up here, man. I got a real flare up, and my hemorrhoids, and all I need is steroid. And, and I heard that you guys are some kind of calm center dispatch for the whole world. And I just think that's real great that y'all are doing that for the world. But hey, man, you kind of do me a favor and get somebody down here to give me a lift to the uh, to the hospital to the ER so I can get a steroid for my hemorrhoids. All right. Well, again, my name's Alabama Transy. I live at 69 uh, Flare Up Way. Okay, man, thanks a lot. Thanks for doing the Lord's work for us out there. Amen. A Alabama Transy sounds familiar. Hey, John. Brian, how are you, man? Uh... Uh, middle of the night here in Northern California, just uh, working, but I thought I'd touch base with you guys. Uh, just wanted to hit on something that we spoke to or spoke to on uh, Messenger, um, just how overlooked uh, dispatch is pretty much all the time. So little history, like I kind of gave you, I was a five-year dispatcher turned uh, deputy now for uh, three years. And uh, you know, I saw when I was working there, I see it when I'm working patrol as well. There's, you know, administration often overlooks dispatchers. They, uh, they stick them in the corner, treat them like, uh, you know, they're less than, uh, average citizens. But, um, I just wanted to see if you guys can maybe, you know, talk about that a little bit, just how, uh, important the job is, how, uh, important the relationship is between, uh, dispatch patrol and how they kind of weave everything together. Um, can't wait for the show. 
super pumped to hear you and Drew uh, on a weekly basis talking about uh, stuff that really hits home and, um, you know, touches on all kinds of different topics. So uh, best of luck to you guys. Um, hope to hear from you soon. And uh, guns up. Giddy up. That's music to my ears. Hello. He said that to me like a month ago. I hope that he's not massively disappointed. I hope his hopes haven't been held high this entire time. The only time. thing he's disappointed about is not hearing Jason's phone call. Now, we well, can get Jason back on the line if he calls in. Did we fix the settings so that uh, the audience can hear? I just wanted to leave a message for Com Center. Merry Christmas. Uh, I don't want to use too many F words and say fuck too many times. So Drew makes me put some money in the swear jar or something. So happy holidays and looking forward to Com Center. This is totally what uh the the gamut of of who we're gonna um <clears throat> deal with in our everyday lives as dispatchers um and you know what it's most important about doing this is uh, getting a good night's rest so john what do you think we should do from here because we still have just dispatcher john who's a valuable asset i have other means that we can share uh, but I didn't know if you had another caller available to us. Well, something that caller said I wanted to touch on. He said, what what can we do to bridge the gap or get a, uh, it was cutting out and I was I got the gist of it. But, you know, every dispatcher needs to know. That really it's our t it's our job, it's our it's almost our responsibility to to get it out there i mean i got the most notoriety when i started pushing back and uh giving it right back to everybody that was making fun or making jokes of dispatchers and that's I, that's just when i started seeing uh my numbers grow or whatever but i mean even before all this i was always the guy that would um you know, I gave it right back to the any joke they had. I I would match it and hit it with another one, and uh, I just it's it's us to fight back. I mean, not literally fight back, but we have to fight back and we have to get what's ours and the notoriety of it and and get out there and because the day that I was like somebody said you're just a dispatcher and I was like you're damn right I am. And here's what I can do. It seems like from that day forward, just embracing it, that's when I started um, enjoying it more, learn more, getting involved more. And uh, yeah, you definitely have to have that self respect because when people call, you're, you're, you're not really the person they want to talk to. They think you're a police officer, they think you're a doctor or whatever it is that they need. And the first mm -hmm. thing they'll ask is, well, can I talk to a, a cop? And you're like, well, I know more about what's going on than probably they do. And I know more about how to help. Yeah, if you want two that. steps back. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, one, uh, a story that um, I talked to dispatchers all over. And I had one that was telling me that I took a call and come to find out it was like a retired um I don't want to give too much away, but it was a retired coworker for a separate department. And um, the dispatcher heard when the crews got through the door and uh, it was kind of getting to them that they were on the phone with uh, the person when they passed. And uh, I said, you know, you need, I said, no, you, you gave him what nobody else could. He was not alone when he passed. Right. He knew that he was with family. You were on the line with him. And uh, there's always, that's just the way I, I've always, I want people to look at things. Um, they're, it, it was we touching. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. We completely align in this thought. I, I had, I had a, uh, a, a friend uh, who hit me up with the DMS because he had gone through a pretty traumatic situation and uh you know he made light of it in a sense and i just kind of explained to him and it's almost not a throw down explanation i have but i mean like i've used it before with the dispatchers that i work with because they've been through some pretty shitty things too um you know instead of looking at the curse of 
you know, why me? Why, why did God choose me to be on the phone to hear this, to have to try to sort this out and endure it? Um, how about you reframe that um, into God actually chose you to be on the phone to endure that because, um, you know, it's just, it's not a meme or an old adage where you're like, <laughs> you know, he's not going to give you too much that you can't handle, but it's the, it's actually the honor of being able to uh, be in the presence of somebody who's taking their last breath and and you providing them comfort. I mean, it, it certainly isn't what anybody signs up for, but the risk is always there of it occurring and it's going to produce some kind of uh, lasting memory on you, whether it's good or it's bad, but um, not everything has to be uh, totally negative in the profession. And, and I, I think that there are way more uh, honorable things that go on in that communication center. And that's what the show I want to be about is to get the word out that th- this isn't, you know, even, even in general meme wars, which I will engage in, you know, 24 seven, but, um, th- this isn't about us and them. This is about we, and, and we all need to kind of understand that we all have a role in this and it's an equal role. Unfortunately, the dispatchers aren't treated the same. They're, they're, they're considered, um, it, you know, it's, it, it never ceases to amaze me that people say that, you know, the job's not dangerous, but that, that that's, that's so far from the truth. The, the job is very dangerous. When, when I was the administrator in a communication center, we had uh, two dispatchers die that while I was up there. I mean, it's dangerous. People, it be, people die, not from the acute danger of gunfire or being run over by a car or having a roof collapse on them when they're trying to put the fire out, but it's the associated diseases that come along with just prolonged and um, just trauma after trauma after trauma, and and you have no warning, and you have no, you have no way of controlling it. And guess what happens when you hang that phone up? The next call comes in, and you have no control over that. And you have to hear people, the best people, in their worst moments. And um, I think it's time that if you're not going to recognize dispatchers in the form of they are first responders. I mean, we had a, we had an issue here in the state of Florida, the great state of Florida where governor DeSantis issued thousand dollar checks to all the first responders, but he kind of snubbed the, the dispatchers because they're not in that job classification. Uh, they're still stuck in the clerical classification. Um, it's time that we start giving them the recognition they deserve, the mental health help that they deserve. And certainly uh, we need to look at their retirements and their <laughs> their status. I mean, I know that there's a, that 911 Saves Act that's that's been uh, passed around, and from what I understand, was actually slipped into that big 1.7 trillion dollar omnibus bill. Uh, so it's passed, but um, all that does is it just makes the Department of Labor reclassify an emergency dispatcher as such, as an emergency worker. So. Uh, there's progress, but there's a lot of room to be made. You're, you're making pro like, this is all grassroots. Like John, you're making progress in, in this field. And, and that's what I want this to be. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. It, it's nice to see that, you know, state here and there, you know, they're passing it and then, you know, it, it's just going to keep growing and growing. And it's, uh, it's nice to see that. And, and I, what I, the, something that I've noticed, uh, you kind of hit on more earlier, uh, dispatchers are bringing heat right now with, um, a lot of them are becoming, uh, physical fitness trainers. People's just kicking ass, working out. And I mean, that's, you know, there's always, you know, the, uh, people saying you look good, you feel good. It's so important for, I think people in our our occupation, our field is uh, you have to fight every day. But you go in and it's nothing but just bad, bad. You know, every once in a while you get a good call. Everyone, you know, but you're like you said, you're hearing the worst of everybody, and then it's like double hard. It's you, we have to double down too because to um, the mental health aspect alone. And, you know, I'll, I hear from a lot of apartments and they're just not, it's not a priority. And uh, 
is if there is and something I will throw out whenever there's a call or something that uh, any you're going to get hit with a call no matter how there's going to be something get you at some point and anytime they do a debriefing or there's something that should involve dispatch I'll be like where's the dispatcher yeah sometimes it's a chore to get get them to recognize that the person that needs to be in there front and center is the dispatcher. That's that's who got the ball rolling, and that's who heard the most critical part of the whole thing, right? I mean, yeah. unless an officer involved shooting or something that that it's an on view situation. But you know, when somebody calls on the and this happened when I worked up there, when somebody calls nine one one and says, um, "Hey, a chopper, a helicopter just fell out of the sky and chopped." my truck in half and i think my father's dead and and ems is trying to give them pre-arrival instructions are you sure you can, you can't get a pulse and finally the guy says there is a fucking propeller through his body you know what i mean like he had to he had to spell it out so now two dispatchers are affected by that Obviously, the guy is affected by that, and then every cop and and firefighter that uh, a paramedic that shows up is affected by that. But you're hearing that raw. You're not pulling up on it when things are starting to settle down. Not that it's going to be any better in that situation, but you're hearing it raw. So I, I think we need to get a little bit better about recognizing that part and, and at least giving closure to some of these things that they endure. And if I, you know, I Drew, the other thing is, sorry, just the other thing, you know, Drew mentions this scenario with a helicopter and, you know, you think that that's something that's pretty preposterous or like a once in a lifetime event. Uh, but any 911 dispatcher that's taken any calls for any amount of time has something like that. Uh, you know, uh, you take a call for an unknown medical, you ask them as a person breathing, they're not breathing. You start giving CPR instructions and uh, the person is in such shock, they finally say their head's gone because there's a shotgun in the room. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be something as uh, big or, or, you know, uh, like a big blockbuster movie for it to be something utterly devastating. Uh, we all know that suicides happen every day, certainly suicides by firearms. And 911 dispatchers are talking to the people, often friends and loved ones who find them. And you're in that moment with them, whether you like it or not. And there's no training for how to properly empathize with them or help them get through it. And you can't hang up the phone. You're in there. You're just in there with them. And it's, uh, it's real. Very real. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to show you how, how quick it can go from in our department, you know, in, in our, in dispatch to the patrol, it can go from ho hum to, Oh shit, real quick. Just recently I, I took a, uh, 911 hang up dispatchers everywhere happens multiple times a day didn't i mean uh you know call back i can hear someone they say i don't have an emergency and hung up i tried to call back it goes to voicemail so um we sent an officer out to verify just to make sure nothing was wrong uh officer pulls up and the guy came out and engaged him with a firearm. So it was, I'm on scene. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Shots fired within seconds. So yeah, everybody. You have to live with having sent him out there. you know. Right. <clears throat> the way that that call hit me, it's getting kind of more and more these days. So I guess it hasn't been so long, but. I almost sent an officer to his last call is the way I looked at it. And it was people like, well, you're stretching. I went, no, no, it, no. it was just doing a routine. <laughs> this is go. It's going to be no big deal to people screaming within seconds. And Nightmare. I, 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 can tell you, I, I know it's, it's obscure that we bring up helicopters and I definitely don't want to bring everybody down here, but uh, that actually happened to me when I was a dispatcher. I I was involved in an incident. I was I, I told this story on a podcast before, but I was involved in an incident where um, they ended up sending a, another agency's helicopter out to do a search and kind of a search and rescue or search and recovery. 
and there was bad weather and the chopper went down and the pilot and the officer died. And I, I'm telling you to this day, it's been uh, well over 31 years. I, I know that I sent that guy to his death. And it, it's not like, just like you say, John, you, you're dead on. People tell you all the time, no, it's not you. It's, you know, it's the butterfly effect or it's fate or it's whatever. You can say whatever you want. I mean, I know what happened. I, I know exactly what happened. And I, it wasn't intentional. It certainly wasn't intentional, but it doesn't make it any less sad. So, um, you know, I, I just think that there is room for communication uh, outside of communications. And I think that that's uh, what we're looking to do here. I want to end, end on a high note. Um, I, I, I want to serve that purpose. And uh, we're going to do it with John's help, uh, it, both John's. Uh, Co-host John and, and dispatcher John, hopefully you'll come back again uh, with us. Let me share one more meme with you. Anytime. Just, just to uh i'm only just thinking about coming back drew <laughs> <laughs> i'm only thinking about letting you come back so uh just how about this uh so i said uh so i <laughs> so i said i don't have a damn clue where zone six is and the alarm company dispatchers look uh, you know perhaps this isn't a great representation on the screen but uh it's it's george costanza and jerry seinfeld uh, every alarm company dispatcher has a situation in zone six. Do they not? And they will saying. never have that key holder and or subscriber information. Nope. When you nope. need. No. They know nothing. Even telematics companies won't know the make model or color of the vehicle. So <laughs> to give you a, a little insight, inside um, something that I'm getting involved with now is I've, uh, I'm teaming up. I kind of put out a teaser the other day, but I'm teaming up with uh, American Emergency Preparedness, AEP training. They're bringing me on as a consultant and I'm going to be going around training dispatchers. And uh, I actually mentioned that to them. I'm like, hey, someone ought to look at training uh, alarm company dispatchers. And they actually have a, a, a different set of classes for that. And I'm like, they, I mean, they need it. And I said, I think if we would be the best dispatchers going and talking to them and telling them our side of what we get when they call us and how important it could be. And I'd like to, but the, that's, that's coming up pretty soon. Um, Great for you, man. You're, you're, you're do that. You, like you, you're, you're really good at getting the message out and obviously good at delivering the message, you know? Um, I'm hoping. I think that, go ahead. You're hoping. Uh, mm -hmm. John, co-host John, JB, I'm sorry. His name is JB. Do you have any final words? Well, uh, no. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us on the first show. You know, we had some hiccups. This is the most technically complicated uh, episode. I have so much equipment here and so many wires going all over the place, and we have so many different forms of software i will tell you that uh drew and i uh being so embarrassed we will uh, be absolutely just paralyzed awake for the next week until we can get this all figured out um, yes. it's that just like that feeling when you go home and you're feeling good and you didn't take home any stress and then you realize you forgot to cancel that warrant it's going to stick in our brain you know, for the rest of the week uh, you left you left them in the holding cell so. uh, yep. John, I bid you adieu. I'm going to, I'm going to stick in back in the waiting room, stick around for one second, if you don't mind. Um, but listen, uh, all, uh, technical glitches aside, our hearts are in the right place, but we want your, uh, hearts in the right place too. And, uh, we certainly want to give dispatchers a voice and we want to give, uh, the cops who have questions and or support and firefighters, even if, uh, if somebody can draw them a picture to get them to the website, uh, we will meet, we will reconvene next Thursday night at eight, hopefully with uh, probably um, some better uh, tactics and equipment. But until then, thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the rebound. Have a good night. <laughs>